Could you touch on expansion tanks and chilled water systems? Key points would be its location in the system first and foremost. Okay, so let's come over to our whiteboard here and let's draw this up a little bit. So an expansion tank, it's a cylinder that'll have a pressure tap. It can come in on the top or bottom. It'll just be a tap on the end that the piping will connect to. And inside of here is a bladder, okay? So there's this big bladder that will fill with water. And in addition to that, we'll have a little uh, air chuck port like you'd see on a car or a bike tire over here on the side. So this cavity around here will pressurize with air and this bladder inside will fill with water. The whole point of this system is to help us maintain water pressure on the loop. Specifically, we'll have a pipe coming over and if we have our pump assembly over here, so let's just say this is our pump. This is the pump uh, inlet flange. We have our outlet flange with the pipe uh, water going out. So we would end up connecting to this pipe here on the pump. Okay, so this is the same place you would also have your makeup water and such connected as well. So what's going to happen is as the, the, as the loop pressures would naturally fluctuate, which they will, as water changes temperature in the loop, the pressure will increase or decrease with that change in temperature. And this could be something as simple as just we had an off cycle where we did a, a shutdown overnight, we come back on the next morning and we need to, uh, we're processing the loop down. Well, that, that whole process is gonna cause a lot of pressure fluctuations due to the major temperature swings from the loop being uh, not processed overnight to needing to get it processed the next morning. These bladder tanks help correct for that expansion. As that pressure increases on this loop, this tank or this bladder will be able to expand out and it's going to push against the air pressure in the tank in this cylinder so as that's happening we have some room to kind of breathe in and out on the loop without having the loop pressure as a whole expand in and out excessively now in most plants i see that they try to put these at the top of the loop Sometimes that means the if the whole plant and pump assembly are actually at the top of the loop, then the whole thing will just be up there together. It's one piece. And there's been some cases where I see that they'll put this at the top of the loop, but the plant and the pumps will be down at the bottom of the loop. So these are not always located with the loop, or I mean with the pumps. Sometimes they'll be separate at the top. Sometimes they may be down close to the pumps. So those are the two locations that I personally see these being implemented the most. The purpose of what they're doing and serving works the same either way. And one of the things that, and this tripped me up for a long time, is we want to set this tank pressure to what our loop pressure is desired to be. Okay, And we want to do that at the um, operating te uh, temperature. So if we have a loop that we expect to run a 45 degree supply water through, now if this was pushing through our chiller, for example, then this pump should be feeding into the chiller. So if we had a 10 degree design loop, which would mean at load, we would have roughly 55 degrees coming into here. Then that 55 gets pushed to the chiller, chiller turns it to 45, and then it comes back out to the rest of the building. So in that state, I would prefer to be in that 50s range right here. So if I was between, say, 53, at least 52, 53 on my incoming water, that would be close enough, in my opinion, you're within a couple of degrees, to then set this uh, tank pressure. And the reason for that is you want this tank calibrated to your operating conditions and then allow the off cycle when it heats up to be able to expand out further from there if as needed. So that is just my personal preference, or I say it's my personal preference. And to my understanding, that is the best way to go about it. That's the way I've been trained to do it is more of what I'm trying to say. You will use just a regular air chuck gauge and you will set this 
tank pressure to that. They'll come preset. I've seen them like 12 PSI is pretty common for these to come from the factory, which if your tank was at the top of the loop and you're running a normal loop, which I would say at the very top of the loop, your return line that goes back to your pumps at the very, very top, I would expect that to be roughly about 10, 12 PSI typically. So if that's where it's going, which a lot of the times that is the kind of preferred place for it to go, then that default pressure straight out of the box would be fine. But I do, f I have found that a lot of these, they don't get field calibrated. So the, they'll get put by the pumps, but the pumps are down several stories below. So they're not at the top of the loop. They're more towards the bottom, but they did not change the calibration on this. So basically if you do not calibrate this, this pressure, this tank, and this should be something you check on a uh, on a at least annual, if not quarterly basis when you're doing the maintenance. Once the loop is filled, this is going to be a higher pressure than that 12 PSI all the time. So let's say we had a three-story building, and let's say we had seven stories per floor, and we were at the bottom of the, of the uh, loop with here. So three times seven, that's 21. At about 10 PSI, that's about 31. So I would expect about 30, 31 PSI here at this uh, pump inlet. If this is set to the factory default of 12 PSI, well, this has no purpose in the loop. Like it's serving absolutely no purpose because it doesn't have enough counter pressure to actually act against that bladder at that point, which completely nullifies its effect. So it's important that we know where it's at in location, what the loop pressure is expected to be, and that this uh, tank pressure is calibrated to that pressure. Uh, and, and to my understanding, like there's no issue just putting standard air in here. I know some guys put nitrogen in there. You can go about that process however you wish. But that is the core concept of what a expansion tank is and where it would be and then how you would go about calibrating that in the system.